Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you from the bottom of my heart. First of all, I want to thank all of you that have been standing with us in all the different ways. In prayer, in giving, in encouragement, and in many other ways. I want to thank all the internationals who may be joining us by streaming. We thank God for the technology. I want to thank those that have believed from all around the world in the nations and raised a prayer calling forth Gideon. That's been a great manifestation of faith and love. And I want to thank faith. You will not know until much, much later what a role you have played in the life of the church in this nation. Um... I have ever been in this position before with my first wife. By then she was not my wife. She was a member of a team, a gospel team I was leading. At one time we were going through a lot of struggles and the Lord was constantly rebuking us. And he warned us that if nothing changed and changed immediately a soul is going to be removed from our midst. And one of those evenings we got together to pray around six and he spoke to us so deeply rebuking each one of us and revealing secrets we were all hiding in our hearts and he said today I gave and I'm going to remove one of you is going I will not go into the details but I was taken away from us the process is long. I don't want to go into that. We cried. We pleaded. Before she left. Before she was taken away. We cried. And well before she was taken And we were all surrounding her. My sister Rose Nsimbi is here and she is witness. Others have gone already to be with the Lord. And she came out, she left with all of us watching. And the immediate reaction was devastation. We cried, we wailed. We threw ourselves all over. And she fell down in a f she was on her knees. And she fell down on her face. So her body was really folded like that. And at some point I reached a decision in my heart. I said, Lord, you are sovereign. There is no way we are going to deal with this. At that time there was a lot of persecution against us in Nakaseke. 
And I thought, Lord, what are they going to do to us? When they find a dead body among us in the morning. How shall we explain it? What will we say? Even to our own believers, converts. What shall we say? They are going to ask, what were they doing? How did one of them die? And I say to, I moved from one to another of our team. We were about ten people. And I said, please, please, hope against hope. Pray for resurrection. And they began to shout prayers. And I said, shh, don't shout the prayers. Pray from the heart. We don't want people to hear us talking about resurrection. And we prayed, groaning prayer. I remember we were walking up and down. And I remember I would take like 30 minutes to walk from here to that red carpet. Pleading with the Lord. Bringing all reasons, Lord, you cannot allow this. We prayed like that for eight hours. And then... I realized when a person dies there is rigor mortis. I imagine what if in the morning people come and find her body in that shape. Rigid. What will happen? Are they going to force the bones and break them? I said, we must do it now. I called, I, again I went on one by one. I said, let's get together. Let us stretch her. We knelt down. And no one wanted to touch her body. So we began to pray and say, Lord, you are sovereign. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We are just worshiping him. And at that time, I can't explain it all. There was like a, an earthquake, but a very, very, very brief one. There was that shaking. I don't even know whether it was an earthquake. I don't know. It was something beyond my explanation. And in that middle of the earthquake, of that noise and shaking, there was a loud cry, a loud shout, and it was inside where we were. I remember that with my eyes. And this is what I saw. Every one of us could testify what I saw. Process body was no longer on the ground. It was up in the air. Stretched out. And as I looked, it began to fall back. And I knew it was going to hit the ground. I was in fear. I was wondering what is going on. But I stretched out my hand. For her to fall in my hands. Some of our team ran away. Others did what I did. They put forth their hands. We looked at her. And then I said, Suddenly she, she, she did. <sighs> and she began to breathe. Glory to God. Let me not go into other details. But I remember the Lord spoke to me. And said, give her water to drink. But give her drip by drip. 
Because she's been through a lot. She passed through the wilderness. And she has tested the thirst that I had on the cross. So feed her with very, very small drops of water. She took a long time to even show real consciousness. And when she eventually was able to speak, she could only whisper. And I remember I put my ears on her mouth. And this is what she said. I have seen the Lord. And I have found grace. That is what she said. If you're clapping, please clap for Jesus. Later on, like a day later, after she had rested, she began to tell us what she had seen. As she went up, and it was so scary, the demon-like beings chasing after her, and then eventually it turned around and she was in another world. And she began to tell us about heaven, about angels, about the streets of gold that were transparent, you could see endlessly into the street. About gardens so beautiful beyond explanation. About voices singing and filling the air with worship and yet they are not shouting. And eventually into the throne room of the Lord. She described what she saw. She described what she saw the Lord seated on the throne. And how she, he began to open the books. The recording of this is available in our media department. She later showed how she, could, she couldn't pass the mark. And she was like given up to hell. And she was escorted in that direction until the, the heat began to leak her body. Not only her outer body, but even the inside. Long story short, she had a voice calling her and she had no power she had fallen down and she felt power enter her body and draw her back and when she came back to the angel the angel said to her you have found grace before the Lord Eventually, all, all of it over, the Lord sent her back. With very specific messages. He told her, it's going to be for a short time. And I'll call you again. Make sure that time, you are ready. You are ready. When Prose came back, that was 1988, she stayed with us for 10 years. In 1989, in May, the Lord took her again. It all happened, I'm not going into details, but for a week, the Lord called us away for a fast. And we were in our bedroom, just two of us. And every day, he would come down. 
and speak to us. At first it was just about our lives. And then about the church, about the work, about the warfare, and said be ready. I was talking to somebody and saying, I remembered later when he would be talking to me, he would mention mainly, say, this is going to happen, be strong. You need to handle it like that. Things are going to happen like this, but when they do, this is how you have to act. But when he spoke to her, he would say, clean up. Remove this. Remove that. This has been with you a long time. Get rid of it. He was not talking to her about the work and the future. He was talking to her about the state of her life. And I never noticed it at that very moment. Until much later. It was from Monday. Wednesday. On Thursday, was it on Thursday? It was Monday to Thursday. Friday, we decided, let us go to church and tell the church what the Lord has been speaking to us. Pastor Michael Chimuli, you see, I can witness to that. We went and spoke to the church. And then Saturday, we called the ministers, the leading, leading ministers, to come home. He says, Mr. Nabdede, you are all here. You can testify. And God had revealed to us in the first in the week that we had been infiltrated by a satanic agent. And he was right in the inner circles. And he had revealed that to us. But when we went to church, we did not mention who it is. But when we called the ministers home, and we began to talk about everything. I, I, I remember it was Michael Chimuli who started and said, but there's something I am not sure about. And he began to talk about this person who had infiltrated the Eventually, everyone spoke and it was clear. People had been seeing things, people had been sensing things, but no one was speaking. That very evening, my mother came to visit. Saturday evening. That night, we prayed, and Prose had low blood pressure. In the, we went to hospital. They treated her. She stabilized. We came back home. And again, it started. And Eventually, her body was beginning to get very cold. She was warm up, but the legs were cold. I panicked. I started saying, what do we do? I called Sanabdere, Edith Musisi, and others. And they came. And, uh, okay, Edith is the one who came. Edith is the one who came. We took Proceed to Lubaga Hospital. Proceed to Amtuala Lubaga Mduali. Got there and they delayed. They said first pay and we had to first sort out the money. Tuwa tu kayo nevatu netuda mumisoso atenga tuna kwe terezo kufuna kuse kukuwa yu sente. Eventually, vanyuma. We got in. Tu yingira. And the doctors were saying. Sao na agamba. They say to Edith and the others. Naga Edith na avalala. It's too late. Mm-mm. Mukere ye. She has just passed away. Yaka, yaka phone, yaka kutuka. I say to Edith, take the children back home. And the doctors were still trying to resuscitate her. Afterwards, they say to me, very sorry, Pastor. It's too late. Mm. We cannot bring her back. I said, okay, get out. Get out. I had all the faith in my heart. I have ever seen this. I can see it again. And they got out. 
And I stretched my hands to lay on her. And yes. a voice said to me, No. I said, What? He said, No. Don't do it. It's the time. I knew it was over. It was like a, an arrow of pain pierced my heart. To think it's over. When am I why am I sharing this with you? I don't share this easily. In many places I go, I don't share this. Because I have seen a manifestation and a display of faith in the last few days and I really honor that and I know it's not in vain I know it's the work of the Holy Spirit my heart grieves that some people may end up losing their own faith because of expectations not being met. And I just wanted to affirm to you. My own case. Na yangu. Is it possible? who had our prayers to raise back prosy. Is it God who said to me, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Are you with me? I want to read a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes. It is in chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 8. It says to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. And a time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up. A time to weep. A time to laugh. A time to mourn. A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones. A time to embrace. A time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain. And a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Is this your God? He's the one who does all this. Is he the same God who is in charge of all these diversities? Is, the, is he the God who gives? And is he the God who takes away? How does he feel when he's taking away from us? I don't know. But he's God. And he still reigns. Ah, Very quickly, I want to bring up a few more points and then I'll be done. I want to talk about Gideon more specifically. Gideon was a prophet of God. Gideon has been amazing. Gideon has been Indeed, amazing. There are many things that you may not know out there that we know only internally in the home. You know, before God makes a person 
known to the world. There are many things he does inside. And those around begin to see them. To hear them. To feel them. To wonder about them. By the time the world begins to recognize that something is special about this person. Working for long. Amen. Amen. One of the things I really thank God for Gideon's life. Is the ministry order of Melchizedek. At a very tender age, he started this work. I remember he came and spoke to me. And I quoted to him what John the Baptist said. A man will not allow anything except that which the Lord has given. I said, follow your heart. If, if you strongly feel it's of God, follow your heart. And I remember many times he would say, come and speak to us. We meet every, I think, Thursday. And I said, Gideon, I will come at the right time. But as of now, you are the sower. And you are the one to water that seed. It's amazing how much of that fruit is standing today. There are many people even at 50 years who cannot look back and show this is what I've done. And these are the lives I have impacted. Or these are the lives I have envisioned. We thank God for that. Gideon not only influenced this ministry, order of Melchizedek, he began to make an impact in the nations. The first time he traveled to Korea, he led a team. And when they were there, the Lord would minister through him prophetically. Things that I later heard about and I was amazed. And I began to watch and say, Lord, what are you doing in the life of this young man? I can talk about impact and testimonies in so many different countries. Gideon was no longer going to the nations on my ticket. He was not depending on my name. The Lord had built a platform for him. And when it comes to making friends, I have, I have to say, I have to take off my heart for him. I'm not that good at making friends. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes I would just watch as he interacts with people so easily and so melting in with them. I began to talk about Gideon, uh, to Gideon about the future of WTN. And told him, you are the successor. After me, you are going to take over the leadership. At first, he struggled with it. Because in his mind, he saw all of Melchizedek going one direction and WTM going another. And I gave him the space. About a year later, he came back and began to talk to me about how he sees the two jail. And how his heart is ready. I thought he was not 
serious I gave him more time but he kept coming back and I remember when he brought to me faith we met and dinner and what and what with all the other siblings but I said I want to meet with you just the two of you and we talked and I said faith how much do you love Gideon? Gideon she of course confessed she, she's sold out. I said Gideon how much do you love faith? And I said faith let me tell you something. This is not just another young man. This is a special vessel. He's not even just another preacher. He is a chosen leader. And he is going to lead this ministry after I'm no longer here. Do you know the implication of that? Are you willing to live with it? And I said it also means you may have two, three, four homes in Australia, but it will never be your permanent home. Uganda will always have to be your main home. I said, are you ready for that? And she said, yes. I'm ready to make Uganda my home. You would clap to God for that. At this moment, what do I feel in my heart? I have been relaxing and saying, slowly I'm going to be pulling out of the work of leading WTM. And I have been sickly a little bit over the last few, I would say, two years. But in my heart I would say, Lord, let your servant rest in peace. Because you have prepared someone to take over. I know you don't understand what that means. The pain that's there, the, the vacuum, the helplessness that comes. And to think, Lord, now what? I've got to go back, start building all over again. Now what? It's been a struggle not to lose hope. And I have to say to myself, you are still God. You reign. You have not lost it. I'll trust you, Lord. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to go. I'll trust you. I know it's not been in vain. I know all these years have not been vain sowing and investing. I know that you are in charge. And that's what I feel. I feel, Lord, what is tomorrow bringing? Where, where am I going? Where is this work going? All these visions we've been sharing with Gideon and talking about this inspiration, what is going to happen to them? I heard one young man say, the fathers don't have faith. They just want to bury him. And I said in my heart, you don't understand. Uh, 
you don't even know what it means to pray for someone to resurrect. It's not a simple expression of your desire. I have been there. I can testify. Beloved, the times we are living in are difficult times. And I want to tell you one thing. God is doing a quick walk. And if we don't awaken, I see Gideon very much like a Stephen. A Stephen in the Bible. A, it, a sign of changing times. A sign of changing standards. I may not be able to explain it. Now, one of the questions that Faith asked me from the very first evening With all the barriers and challenges I went through. With all the challenges in my family. Why do he allow me to do that? Come to Uganda, give me a husband and then take him away. That led my heart to cry. Because I had no answer. I had no answer and I thought, Lord. What? But I have learned in my life never to ask God why. I began to get some what I think are oh. So this is what you are doing. I just ask you continue praying with me that God would bring the full understanding. I pray that in the next few days I may be able to meet with the I was at the prayer mountain that Gideon called him those are not words spoken by a person who is waiting to live another 10 years I want to hear more but he was preparing them very much in the same words as Jesus Christ prepared the apostles. He said, have you understood? Do you promise to stand? Do you promise not to give up the vision? It talks about, I'm going to a place where God's ministers go. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? I just bowed to the Lord and said, Father, be glorified. I don't understand. And when I talked to him, he didn't indicate anything. But when I listened to this, I can't say that is from Satan. I can't say it's from the air. And he did not only talk to Ivan, he said, I want to see you with two others. God, I know. When I see his work, when I see his fingerprints, I recognize them. And I step back and say, Only God can do that. So I stand here tonight. I said I'm going to share from my heart. I want to come and crown it all. I am sure that whoever has been listening keenly.